This is the demonstration of the dorsum of the foot. The dorsum of the foot is covered by a fascia, which is called the dorsal fascia, and therefore it converts the dorsum of the foot into a compartment, which is called the dorsal compartment. What are the structures of the dorsal compartment? Straight away we can see these big long tendons. This is the tibialis anterior tendon. This is the extensor hallucis longus tendon. These multiple tendons that we see here, these are the extensor digitorum tendons. And further laterally we have the fibularis tertius. Once we reflect them, we see yet another set of tendons and muscle. We purposely did not cut these tendons because we wanted to retain the anatomical situation. Once we retract them, we notice one muscle here, which I have lifted up. This is a muscle which is unique to the dorsal compartment. This is the extensor hallucis brevis. This extensor hallucis brevis. And as we can see, the tendon goes and it merges on the undersurface of the extensor hallucis longus. So this is one muscle of the dorsal compartment. Arising in the same place as the extensor hallucis brevis is this next muscle that we have picked up here. This muscle. This is the extensor digitorum brevis. And we can see that the extensor digitorum brevis is also giving multiple tendons. We have retracted the extensor digitorum tendons to show you the smaller tendons of the extensor digitorum brevis. And we can see that each tendon of the extensor digitorum is accompanied by a brevis tendon which goes and attaches to the undersurface. So this is the extensor digitorum brevis which we have lifted up and these are the tendons. These are the muscles which are unique to the dorsal compartment. Now let's take a look at the neurovascular structures in the dorsal compartment. We can see this artery here. This is the continuation of the anterior tibial artery. The anterior tibial artery runs in the anterior compartment of the leg and then it goes under the extensor retinaculum and after that it becomes the dorsal spedius artery. The textbooks describe the dorsal spedius artery as being lateral to the extensor hallucis longus tendon but in this case we notice that the dorsal spedius artery was medial to the extensor hallucis longus tendon. The dorsal spedius artery then runs on the dorsum of the foot it gives branches, medial and lateral dorsal branches, and it gives a big artery which goes like this, and that is known as the arcuate artery. And this arcuate artery is multiple dorsal metatarsal arteries. And finally, the dorsal spedius terminates as the first dorsal metatarsal artery and a perforating artery, which goes to the sole of the foot. So this is the dorsal spedius. We can feel the pulsation of the dorsal spedius just lateral to the extensor hallucis longus tendon against the head of the talus or the navicular bone exactly where my thumb is located and that is used clinically to palpate the foot pulsation in cases of suspected peripheral vascular disease. The next structure that we can see in the foot extending from the anterior compartment is this nerve here. This is the continuation of the deep fibular nerve. After it has supplied the muscles of the anterior compartment, the deep fibular nerve then continues under the extensor retinaculum and it supplies the muscles of the dorsal compartment, namely the extensor hallucis brevis and the extensor digitorum brevis, which I showed a little while earlier. And thereafter, the deep fibular nerve terminates by piercing the skin and we can see the branch here and it supplies the skin of the first interdigital cleft exactly where my instrument is tracing and this is the first dorsal metatarsal cutaneous nerve. There is one important clinical correlation at this juncture. This deep fibular nerve can get entrapped under the extensor retinaculum which as we can see is a very tough structure here and that condition especially occurs with skiers who wear tight boots and they tie the shoelace tightly across the dorsum of the foot in which case that compounds the compression of the deep fibular nerve and that is known as ski boot syndrome. Such patients will have weakness on the two dorsal compartment muscles and they will have loss of sensation or tingling paresthesia and numbness in the first intermetatarsal space. On the dorsum of the foot we can also see some superficial cutaneous structures, notably this structure which I have lifted up here. This is the beginning of the formation of the long saphenous vein and we can trace the long saphenous vein proximally all the way up and this is the longest superficial cutaneous vein which goes all the way to the thigh. It starts by a union of all the, the dorsal venous network and it starts as the medial marginal vein. And we can see that it continues the medial marginal vein and it runs in front of the medial malleolus. And then it runs on the medial side of the leg. And accompanying this long saphenous vein is this nerve here. And we can see that nerve here and we can see a little bit of the fibers of the nerve here. This is the saphenous nerve which is the longest cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve and it's the only branch of the femoral nerve which goes outside the thigh. And this accompanies the long saphenous vein. 
The long sequence way, this is a very useful site, just above and anterior to the medial malleolus, where we do veni section or veni puncture. This long saphenous vein can also be harvested for coronary artery bypass grafting, in which case they can be an inadvertent injury of the branches of the saphenous nerve and the patient may have paresthesia, numbness or tingling on the medial side of the leg and foot. So this is the cutaneous structure that we can see here on the dorsum of the foot extending onto the leg. Another important structure that we can see, cutaneous structure is this one which we have retained here. This is the superficial fibular nerve. The superficial fibular nerve pierces the deep fascia where my instrument is located here. We have removed the deep fascia here. It supplied the muscles of the lateral compartment and after that in the lower one third of the leg it pierces the deep fascia and then it runs on the anterolateral aspect of the lower one third of the leg as we can see here and it divides into multiple cutaneous branches. This nerve runs superficial to the extensor retinaculum and it supplies the skin of the entire dorsum of the foot except the first intermetatarsal space which of course we have mentioned is supplied by the deep fibular nerve. Superficial fibular nerve in a thin person can be seen as small fibers standing up on the dorsum of the foot if the foot is stretched and the toes are extended. But patients who have repeated inversion injuries of the foot, they get traction neuropathy of the superficial fibular nerve. So these are the structures that we can see on the dorsum of the foot extending from the leg or other way around. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day.